Recognized, Uncle Walker, D, 0, 1. Recognized, Matthew Bordnave, 0, 0, 4. Recognized, Whitney Tang, 0, 0, 5. Hello team. Today, producer Neil and I have zaded out of the Watchtower to Burbank, California. We are back again with storyboard artist Matthew Bordnave, along with fellow storyboard team member Whitney Tang. Whitney has storyboarded for both Lego Justice League, Lego DC Girls, and, this is to be mentioned for producer Neil, the Axe Cop animated series. Whitney, welcome to Whelmed. Thank you for having me. And Matt, welcome back. Hey, thanks. Before we begin, I want to remind everyone that our discussion sessions uh, draw on anything and everything related to Young Justice, including, uh, as of today, up to episode 9 of season 3, the tie-in comics and the video game. If you've not seen, read, or played all of the material and are spoiler wary, please consider this your warning. And with all that out of the way, let's dive in. So, we already talked to Matt at, in depth. Uh, you can go back and check his episode, but we want to do a little brief thing for those people who might not have heard that. Can you tell us a little bit about some of the projects that you worked on in the past and kind of where your education came from? Uh, yeah, I went to Loyola Marymount University to study animation. First of all, I worked on with Young Justice Season 2. I've worked on other Warner Brother properties like Scooby-Doo WrestleMania, Justice League Action, um, the director video stuff, Justice League Flashpoint, um, and a bunch of other new stuff that's coming out soon. Nice. Uh, that yeah. you can't mention yet. That I can't, yeah, yeah I can't nice. talk Gotta about. Gotta love the NDAs, <laughs> yeah, right? Um, and Whitney, we get to dive a little bit more into you. Yes. <laughs> and then we're going to pick both your brains about what we've already seen, all of the terribleness that you helped to put uh, in our minds. <laughs> Um, so, Winnie, tell us a little bit about who you are and what you do in the world. Uh, I'm Whitney. <laughs> <laughs> yes, and, and uh, uh, I'm a storyboard artist. You had told me earlier that you went straight from kind of, you went straight into storyboarding, like basically. Uh, so. No, I, w I was doing animation a bit at this... The, the x Cop animated series. Uh, I was doing coloring on that one. And I, I was doing animation on the shorts team afterwards for that studio. Nice. And, then, <laughs> and then afterwards, I like took a little break and then I took some class because I want to focus in storyboarding. Yes. And then afterwards, I got into Lego... Lego DC Girls, uh -huh. and I just started working here. So. Well, how did that how did that process go? How did you like you go you took a break? You went to go do some edu education and things mm -hmm. that you wanted to pursue. Yeah, uh, I can imagine our listeners are like, wait, where did the falling into doing DC Lego? <laughs> thing? It seems like oh, I just decided I walked in and said I'm gonna do this <laughs> job now. Oh, how did that process happen? Oh yeah, so uh, it's like after I finished the class, I've been I got like a few tests to do the test to get into storyboard. Okay. And then it's like I got this test for Lego DC Girls, and I was like, so it's like an application test that you guys that, uh, you, that you do. Oh no, a uh, the um, it's like my friend dropped my name to the producer for Lego DC Girls because oh, they were okay. looking for board artists, and then oh nice, yeah. So networking is very important. It in is this very industry. important. <laughs> uh, we've been saying uh, recently a lot: uh, preparation plus opportunity mm -hmm. uh, yes. equals luck. Yep. Right. Mm -hmm. So, and that's what it sounds like you were doing. Yep. Yeah. Just, you got to know the people here. Yeah. And, yeah. and participate. Yeah. Yeah. Do the best you can with what you've got and participate. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I love it. So, um, uh, when we were doing our sound test, I just asked you, "Oh, where did you grow up?" As a tester for the sound, and then you're from Taiwan. Taiwan. Yeah. So uh, you said you grew up there until you were nine? Uh, yes. Eight or nine? Yeah. And then you came straight to kind of the Los Angeles area? Yes. What was that story? Tell us that story. Was it your parents moving to the States or did they already live here and there both? Or like what's the... Oh, no. It's like my mom wants to take me and my brother to the States because she feels like the education's better here. Yeah. I see. Yeah. And then so we just kind of like settled in the L.A area because my mom had some friends here so we just kind of like stayed oh, okay, here gotcha. and then like, you didn't pick the cheapest place in the yeah. states to, to, to move to so yeah. Nah. Okay. but yeah and then it's like afterwards it's just kind of like just been here ever since yeah and was and you said you have a brother is that what you just uh, yes you said? so yeah. just one sibling yes do, do they do anything because your your siblings matt were you telling me that you yeah my older brother is a um Graphic designer. Yeah. So, so he's a senior graphic designer for uh, Complex Media. Right. And so, and you, you were visiting him in college. And yeah. And his roommate <laughs> is like a thing, right? Yeah. Well, all right. So I have two older brothers. So my other brother, Chris, 
his roommate was an animation major. Gotcha. And right. yeah, and he was like, you might want to. You know, you think about this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> and so that was. Yeah. So, what about your brother? Does he work anything in this, or is he doing something completely different? Uh, like an accountant or something. No, he's like a yeah. medical industry. Like he's dealing with the old people. Oh, like geriatric. I think so. It's like I don't know. It's like he always talks to. Uh, he always he always talks about it in Chinese. So I was like, what's it English? <laughs> 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 what is the translation? So I was English? like, I just know like he deals with old people. Like all right, That's so the best translation. Yeah, I was like. Yeah. Okay, so not not a storyboard artist. Nope. You're trying to say, <laughs> yeah, I got gotcha. you. So what is it then? What is it that got you into doing? What is it, why is this your thing? What what got you into doing storyboard art? Were you drawing since you were young? Uh, yeah, it's just like for fun. But I was thinking of actually going into like either architecture or industrial design. Okay. And then it's like I was applying for schools, and then it's like I was applying to Cal Poly to go to the architecture program, and then. I actually put down like the undeclared as my major and I was too lazy to change it. <laughs> so I was like, well, the other school is like Cal State Fullerton. It's like, and I put down like arts as my uh, major. And I mean, they, they accepted me. So I was like, I'm just going to go I check guess it I'll out. I just do with arts and take a look around and see what that is. Yeah. So I went to the uh, orientation yeah. kind of thing. And then they like the, there was like this tour to go around the art, in this, like, the art department. And I was like, all right, I'll, I'll check it out. And then it's like the first place that they took us to was the animation animation department. Oh. And I saw like the animation desk. I was like, that looks cool. That's and then that's we have like amazing. a we have a little like really old animation lab there where like like the hand drawn silk kind of lab. Is yeah, it's like because like the back back in the days they're like boarding on like they're animating on papers. So there's yeah. like the giant machine things where they're like tracking. Doing the, the pans movements. and stuff, yeah. I've seen things like that where they like they they like flip up and back like yeah. a giant flip book basically, yeah. and they have these like big stacks of what they're drawing back and forth. Oh, boggles my mind like watching that. But that's what you were seeing was like those yeah, old it's like, school. Yeah, it's like it was like the old school animation machines just kind of sitting in the school's lab, and I was like, this is really cool. And I'm like, I think I'll do animation. Nice. <laughs> You're just going with it. Just You're just like went this with is it, it, and then it's like, yeah, it looks fun. And then it's like, I wasn't sure I want to do storyboard. And then it's like, our school was like, we had to take like multiple elected, like multiple requirement classes before going into like focusing in like illustration or storyboard or animation major. Right, right. And then so I'm just like, I took a, like all these classes, and I was like. All right, storyboard sounds fun, and I just went in it. And that's what you did. You're just doing it. You're just participating, <laughs> right? You're just yeah. like, this is what I, I'm going to do. This. This is what I'm going to do. I just love it. Go with the flow. So, you worked on season three, mm -hmm. right? And Matt, you worked on two yeah, and on three. Yes. So you, uh, but you were doing ink and paint in season two. Ink and paint in yeah. season two, not storyboarding, not at all. Gotcha. So, so when when did you first see Young Justice? Did you see Young Justice or before you got this project or? Like, were you a fan of the show, or did you, you were you just coming in and this was a job that you were doing and you were working on it, and now you know the show? I I knew about the show, and I watched it, and I was like, this is, like, a really fun show, but I really never thought about getting onto it. Yeah. Until my friends, like, Victoria, the colorist, she was like, you should, you should talk to Brandon. I was like, all right. Because, like, Brenda was doing Lego Justice League. Right, yeah, yeah. And then I was like, oh, I should talk to him. I was going to ask if that was the connection, because... Kind of, because Berkeley was also like the board artist on Lego Justice League, and we sat next to each other. Oh, nice. So I, was, so I just sent the email to like Brenna, it's like, "Hey, are you guys looking for board artists?" <laughs> and then he was like, "Uh, it's like the other two teams are Philip, but Berkeley is still looking for a board artist, and he sits right next to you." I was like, "Hey, Berkeley!" <laughs> <laughs> so I just, I just turned up like, "Hey, do you need a board artist?" <laughs> nice. Yeah, and there's like, no uh, harm in asking, no, right? Yeah. If you're okay with the answer being no, yeah. there's no harm in asking. Yeah, and so, then it's like he just like he just because like all he's seen was like my Lego stuff, so it's like, right. like, well, I need to see some other stuff to see if you could draw. It's like I have like a test from Spider Man. It's like if you want to see my test from Spider Man, so okay. <laughs> so he was like, all right, you're hired. I was like, okay. <laughs> wow. <laughs> <laughs> All right then. So, what was your history with comics and like DC characters before you started working on these projects? Did you have any history with comics at all? Nope. No. Nope. So, not a thing that you were like, Thai, like in Taiwan, they weren't. It's like I I was watching animes when I was a kid. Oh so, yeah, that makes yeah. sense. Yeah, and then okay. it's like it's like when I came to America, I was watching like the 
X Men, yeah. like the animated series. Yeah, the the ones like Saturday morning stuff. Yeah, yeah. And I was watching those to learn English. Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah, and then uh, I'm laughing because my my kids are in a French immersion school that also does Spanish on the side, and we're watching like yesterday we we're watching like the Spanish Blues Clues. And <laughs> oh like, my god! My <laughs> eyes are gripped to the screen. I'm like. Morado, okay. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like, I'm like, this is the way to learn it, right? Because uh-huh, it's yeah. like it's what I need right yeah. now. Yeah, perfect. Mm-hmm. Learning English on X Men sounds amazing, a fantastic. <laughs> what's, the, what's the cool thing is like I, another other one. I'm like, yeah, X Men wanted may, help me to inspire me to draw, and then she's like, X Men taught me. <laughs> <laughs> so it's like X Men is the through line. Yeah, yeah. Like, <laughs> Professor X out here too. Yeah, yeah, nice. Yeah, yeah. Well, I, I learned how to read on Superboy and the Legion of Superheroes when I was a kid. Nice. My brother used to bring those comics home. That was one of his like four main titles, mm-hmm. and I, I was like, oh, it's Superman, and oh wait, Superboy. Oh wait a minute, what's happening? <laughs> oh, these are kids. I was like, I'm in, you know. And uh, that's what you, whatever your passion or your interest is, use it to learn the new thing, yeah. whatever that happens, whatever mm-hmm. that new thing happens to be. All right, so we got a little bit about your history. We got a little bit about how you. <laughs> How you got into the show, right? Yes. Let's ask. Let's ask. <laughs> I love it though, right? It's like, you know what? Sometimes just ask, yeah. right? And it's actually it, it's we laugh, but it's a really important it's a really important skill to have. Yeah. Like people don't want to ask. I don't want to be a bother. Right? But if you're oh, if you're asking with sincerity and you're okay with the answer being no, mm-hmm. why not ask? It's okay to ask and yeah. let the other person make a decision, right? Yep. I, it's a really important skill. And this answer was, ask the dude sitting next to you. Yeah, uh, yeah I got to spot you in. Okay, great. That sounds like you're like, got this job in like 45 seconds that it took you to. Quick as hire. I know, right? Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah, sounds good. Well, actually, it's like two days because I didn't have my Spider-Man boards till like the next day. No, 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 all right, let's do it. Let's dive in and talk about season three. We were not able to talk about season three no, with Matt last time. <laughs> uh, and uh, we tried and we tried. And Matt was like, no, I'm not doing it. Why are you guys badgering me? <laughs> uh, but no, now we can do it. Because you guys have, we, we, as of this, as of this, as I mentioned earlier, this recording, we've seen up to episode nine. Mm-hmm. Uh, 10 through 13 airs on Friday, and then we're going to have our six-month hiatus. Yep. You guys, you were telling me last time that there's a there are teams of three yes. they usually work on, and you split uh, episodes up kind of between the team. Yes. So, had, do, were there episodes where you guys worked together, or did like you have like you have episode six and I have episode four and like whatever? That's how you divvy it up. Yeah, but there's there's some moments where it's I'd be like uh, something would happen in an episode, and I would have to talk to another board member and go, "Hey, in this episode, um, you had this person do this." You know, can I see what you did or handle that? Or, you know, certain questions because... Can you give an example? Like like an action sequence or like a talking head sequence? Or like, well, where would that come up? Well, Whitney, you worked on the first episode, right? Yes. So it, it's like, okay, um, you know, because I did... Was it Princess All? Yes. And Princess I, All. Yeah, yeah, and I did Royal Wii, and it was just kind of like... Oh, we're... so you guys were back to back. Yeah. So all those first three episodes are really heavy Markovia yeah. kind mm-hmm. of stuff. So is that what you're talking about? Like there's a theme mm-hmm. that runs through these three episodes. You kind of set the groundwork, right, doing the storyboarding of certain scenes, mm-hmm. right? And then is that what you're talking about? Well, yeah, just like it's it's tough. It's 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 because um, I don't want to give anything away, but it's just kind of like... And I'm not, I'm not going to give anything away, but <laughs> it's just like... This... Come on, man! <laughs> It's like, what was this character doing over here? Because I got to hook this up in this thing. It's you like know? the continuity. Yeah, just making yeah. sure continuity stays consistent. Interesting. And when you're storyboarding, you're are you talking? So you guys are laying out action scenes, like scenes of what's happening in the episode, so that they can look at the animation. You send those. You were telling me last time, take those storyboards, just send them overseas, mm-hmm. so the animators kind of know what it is that is being asked of them. Yeah. Basically, right? Yeah. But. You have uh, you already have character design stuff by like you know Phil Brassa and his team, yeah. right? And so it's not the it's not the character design that you're talking about here, but it's how I know you don't want to spoil anything, <laughs> but like I'm trying to figure out like in the storyboarding, how would you what would you be drawing? Can you give us an example of something you would draw that you drew as inspiration from Whitney's work for a problem that you were trying to solve in what you were doing? Uh, let's see. Well, I know. Um... I had mostly Superboy and and Black Lightning sneaking in, and so oh yeah, yeah, so that stuff. But you had the but, spiraled out faces, yeah, yeah. In and that stuff, yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's just say for for example, I had that scene with sneaking in, and Count Vertigo comes in with the monster, right? And then let's just say Whitney has everything after that. Whitney would come to me and we go, okay, where did you, where did this sequence take place where Vertigo steps in? And I'll pull up the backgrounds and be like, this is where I have them. 
Oh, know, so you know, like, oh, I see what you're yeah. saying. So like frame of reference of people's positioning, something like yeah. that kind of stuff. Oh, yeah. okay, I got it. I got it. I got it. I think I see that now. And so, okay, so you had you had episode one and you had episode two. We yes, figured out. What other episodes did you have in the first nine? Uh, three and then seven. Oh, you did seven. You're responsible for seven, partially. Partially. Nice. <laughs> I'm running into so many people I I hate and love at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> what'd you what'd you do to seven to make what? people upset? What? I don't know. I don't know. What? What part, what I did the beach scenes. Oh, you uh, did yeah. the beach scenes. Okay. Oh, okay. Like nothing. So so you guys do you guys divide up the individual episodes then? Because you're saying you did the beach scenes, but I mean obviously yes. there's a lot going on in episode seven. So wh- was there somebody else storyboarding the other scenes like the yes. vandal yeah. scenes? Uh, it's like the um, team has three board artists. Yes. And then it's like usually the director is dividing up the scenes because like, you know how there's usually like two or three storylines going in each episode? Yes, at least. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Or 12. Yeah. Yes. So they usually get like the, they have like each board artist to bore like that one storyline. Oh, so like the sub, uh, you you got a you got a plot that you're running through. So every time they came back to the beach, you were doing all of those scenes, and yes. that's the only things that you were doing in those. Yeah. Ah, I got so you, it's I got like you, it's you. easier to like for the board artists to keep track of what's going on instead of instead of, of like, jumping into space with Vandal and then yeah. back to the beach. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, that all started. That's starting to make some sense <laughs> for me. And same. Th- so which ones did you did? She did one, three, and seven. Royal We Away Mission, and then Triptych. Okay. Oh, you did Triptych. Yeah. What did you do in Triptych? <laughs> I think when we first see. Uh, Silas getting attacked by um, Livewire. By Livewire. And then... You're talking about Silas Stone. Silas Stone. Vic's <laughs> dad. Yes. Whose face goes into the soup or the yeah, cereal. The, the, the porridge. I don't know. It was whatever, soup. Whatever. Was oatmeal. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. It was soup when you drew it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I was like, is he eating oatmeal? Yeah, like, what time of day is it? I mean, my I, kids eat oatmeal night. Yeah. I guess that's okay. It was sad Silas eating soup. So <laughs> I was too. Um, um, and actually, we should mention this. Like at this point, I don't know when this is going to air, but at this point, we just we just got in that beach scene. They announced Victor Stone yeah. exists in the universe. Yeah. Neil pointed out to me just today that at the end of that episode, somebody says we've got to get this back to Doctor Stone. Mm-hmm. I didn't realize that was Vic's dad until just today. Yeah. Actually, which is amazing. Okay, so. So you did that whole scene where Shade's stealing the device, and I did that. I did um, the Helga, the Helga Jason um, Black, Black Lightning. Lightning. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I did that sequence too, and then when um, oh, you should tell them about the yes. There's like the in that scene you had like the. <laughs> <laughs> I can't hear. Is this a PG show? Yeah. It, it's a, it, the 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 show itself is rated for adults. Okay, so. All right. fair enough. <laughs> I originally, I had a bra hanging from the ceiling fan, and they were like, "Remove that." <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, "Why?" Like, I, I interpret that scene way differently from how you guys saw it. So uh, I just. <laughs> That was that's why I, I think know who's Jeff... responsible for the room being yeah. sixteen sixteen. <laughs> that was that, that was the oh, room good. number sixteen sixteen was probably great. probably oh, great. That wasn't you. No. Okay. <laughs> I was gonna say. Or it could have been on the SketchUp file. It could have it's been. Like, it's it's, it's like in a design. So. Definitely on yeah. purpose. Yeah. That yeah. number for sure. But yeah, I did that, and then also uh, Sportsmaster versus uh, Shazam and Flash. Or, and Flash and Aquaman and Rocket. <laughs> yeah, that that sequence. We were just talking. I was just talking about that with Greg, who was just outside the office where we were at, and about where Billy's like the whole world slows down when Barry's turning into the Flash. Yeah, and he's like, "I love this job," and a Billy in the background's going sure like really slow and i like i didn't realize that's because i I still hadn't figured out the first time i watched it that that was actually billy yeah because he's 17 who's seen billy is 17 years old nobody and so i'm watching this i'm like why is flash turning into the flash in front of this kid (laughs) right and greg was like was that not like clear enough that it was shazam i'm like dude I was still catching up with the fact that that was even Billy in the yeah. back. Why would I think this dude in the background saying Shazam? I had no idea. What's so. yeah? Well, I mean, it's Chad Lowe who's who's doing the voice. But what's yeah. interesting to me is when uh, in the storyboard phase that wasn't slowed down. Okay. So you know, Brandon or Greg or Mel or somebody added that joke of like, this needs to be slow motion when he says Shazam, and it made it that much funnier. Originally, he just said Shazam. Okay. So. So when you're storyboarding that out, will they tell you stuff? Because that's a, that's a tough scene to get across. Like, okay, because it's Barry vision, right? Like, it's, you know, the world is slowed down. Barry's doing a thing. Mm-hmm. Do they communicate something like that? Would that have, if they had said something like that to you, would that have changed your storyboarding? Uh, yeah, I think that, that definitely did get changed in the process. I remember the script. It wasn't like that. And then 
I boarded it one way, and then when the producers and directors come back with notes and going like, hey, I think this scene would be better this way, that, that was definitely a scene that had got changed from what was originally yeah. going on. With Triptych, did you know that there were these three scenes going on that were backwards order in time, so that they were being presented backwards? They told us in the pitch meeting. And okay. so, like, when, when we get an episode, Greg and Brandon are in the room. If, if either of them are available, sometimes we get one or the other, and then they break down. They're like, hey, guys, this is what's happening, and this is gonna, what's going to happen in future episodes. And, and we have really long story meetings about and mapping and planning things out. I, it makes sense to me, and I, I feel silly asking this question, but it's like you, you know in detail what's going to be going on in every episode so that you can get that across in storyboarding. It sounds like a dumb question, but, like, is there anything that you don't know? Do you know what I mean? No, I was like, Greg and Brennan's like, during our first storyboard handout meeting, he yeah. just, they just told us like, all the stuff that's going down to like, the last episode. Oh, okay. Yeah. So you guys knew everything through episode 26, basically? Okay. Yes. <laughs> and we can't know. And that's nope. fine. That's perfectly fine. We're perfectly fine with that. But, so you did the beach scenes in seven. So in episode three, what did you do in that? Uh, that I, wraps the Markovia arc, basically. Yes. Uh, I did the part where uh, the last fight scene on the beach, again, the beach scene. Oh, the beach stay on fight. The beach. I'm just staying on the beach. You stay on the beach. They're like, beach, give it to Whitney. Yeah. Yeah. I got you. So the, the Count Vertigo and Plasmus, yes. and they're all fighting. Yeah. So not the fight scene with Bedlam in the no, in that's the, the, the other. Palace. Yeah, that's the other artist, Andres. Okay. Yeah, and then I also did the. Uh, uh, Brion like finding his power out first. The first time where he freaks out and he, yeah. and yeah. he like sinks into the ground and they're yeah. like, what is happening yeah. right now? Yeah. Right? Or Superboy like, I'm following him with infrared because yeah. <laughs> that's all we can see. Yeah. Right? <laughs> the, the other cool thing is Whitney's, the first, I think the first thing we ever put out there was Whitney's scene, which was Nightwing fighting everybody. Oh yeah. And the, the, he's saving the Russian kids from the. Oh, the first promo that they put yeah. out that had Oracle in it. Yes. And, Okay, so I'm going to, I think we talked about this a little bit, but like storyboarding action scenes, right? Mm -hmm. The choreography of that animation, do you know anything about how they come up? Like everybody's fighting style is very different. So what do they talk to you about like, about, okay, Nightwing's fighting style is a screamer combined with Aikido and like blah, blah, blah. Like, is that a thing? Or do they say, or in this case, they're like, hey, this is what he looked like in season two. Do that. You have a reference this time. But if there's somebody new, like, say, Brion fighting, like, we've never seen that before. Like, how do you storyboard, what detail do you get into when you're boarding things like an action scene where you need to see where everybody is and do you know what I mean? So I, I usually look up, like, references on YouTube on, like, anime and then, like, live action and just try to, like, combine them together. Okay. And then it's like, say, so I used to take Muay Thai, so I just, like, try to stick something in there. I yeah. don't do it anymore, but... And then the... I was just thinking Bruce's... Like, Batman's fighting style is real close up, like very mm -hmm. Muay Thai yeah. ninjutsu combo almost, where he's using a lot of knees and elbows and real close up stuff. Mm -hmm. So... And then it's like, I usually talk to Berkeley before I start the scenes, and I was like, what do you want? Like, what is it? <laughs> it's like, what do you... Like, what kind of style do you think they are? Because, like, I don't know what Brion's stuff is like, and then I don't know what Halo is like. Right. And then, but like the pre existing character, he could be like, oh yeah, like Nightwing is like, he's like an acrobat, so it's like, make him like jump around really light, and then like, he's really light on his feet. It's like, okay. It's and easy then, to do, as yeah. opposed to Superboy. I haven't, I haven't done any Superboy stuff. Yeah, okay. I couldn't <laughs> help but think of like the Superboy scene in that, just right after what you were talking about, where he's in the palace. In the first couple seasons, like the first season, he's just jumping on people and throwing yeah. haymakers. Mm -hmm. yeah. And in that scene, he's all fight stance hitting Bedlam in the throat and mm -hmm. under the armpit, and mm -hmm. it's just like Black Canary boxing fighting yeah. style. Mm -hmm. and it was just like, whoa, this is amazing. Right, so you, clearly <laughs> clearly doing that, if you were doing Superboy, it would be very, very different than you're obviously doing mm -hmm. Nightwing, yeah. right? I gotcha. So one, three, and seven. Other things like in the beach scene in seven, there's little stuff like Halo... Uh, finding and petting a starfish <laughs> on the beach, in the water, like, little premonition of what's coming on down the line. Like, these are things they've already told you they need to have in a scene? Yeah, it's like, it's in the script. It's like, Halo is petting a starfish, and then Forager is walking like a crab with his helmet over yeah, his head. Over his head, <laughs> which is so funny. It was like, what's his name from Futurama? The I'm, going, I'm going for a scuttle. That guy, yeah. 
Yeah, that was so funny. But do you do know, it sounds like you guys knew so much before you guys went in. Did you understand what like, okay, Halo's petting a starfish. Okay, I guess we're just going to have star. But did you understand like the context in which those kinds of things are happening in the background? Or like we were talking earlier about storyboarding, uh, aiming at Matt. Uh, Neil had noticed that in the episode with the, the kids' daycare, super daycare, <laughs> uh, some of the blocks spelled out the name of the doc, the, the surface doctor that works with Aquaman in the comics yeah. is spelled out in the blocks. And it's like, is that stuff that you guys put in or add to? Like, besides a bra on a, <laughs> on a fan. But like, is that stuff you guys sometimes add on to? Or is that things that get added afterwards? It, it could be. Could be both. Yeah, it could be both. It could be a thing that you know, something I would add, or another board artist add, or it could be something the designer add, or something that Brandon or Greg decided would be cool to add. So, and they communicate that to the animator. Because say, say you didn't know that, but that's something they wanted, right? And you didn't know that. You guys send the storyboards and all of the gear and the scripts and all that stuff overseas to be animated. Do they then talk to and animate the animation team directly and say, "We want this <laughs> written on a wall on our, or?" A poster in a background needs to have this missing kid, like the Stephanie Brown thing that was in the comics, where you know that kind of stuff. Does that get communicated at your at your space of work, or does it actually come in toward the animation team? Do you know? Uh, we try to call out what we can, and because yeah. we do like this thing called action notes when we're done doing board. action notes. Okay. Yeah, it's like we just describe what's going on in each panel. Okay. And then it's like we just try to describe like everything. So <laughs> you're so you're drawing out panels yes. and you're writing handwritten yeah. notes, yes. like written choreography notes, basically for that panel yes. as well. Yes, it's something that they in the pre-production phase. So if they wanted those blocks to say that, then they'll ask probably the background teams like, "Hey, when you paint this background, um, can you add this? Can you write this on these blocks? Can these blocks spell this?" So then when they do send it to animation, they for the it. ink and paint you're talking about level now is that what you're talking about um, or no just just background paint just uh or the background designer so if when the the designer's drawing out the background of that shot it's it's like hey we have these blocks right here can you write d r s h on that okay um, so it can it can come in that phase okay because if the if the background designer just drew it to the you know drew the blocks and everything and then it goes to the paint phase and they're like we got to paint this background you know, Brandon or Greg or the director could have came in and just be like, hey, you know what would be cool? Can you paint yeah. these letters on the blocks? Well, this is something we talk about on the show so much because there's obviously, I mean, of course, animation has huge teams of people that are working on them. Mm -hmm. But there are certainly a lot of animated series that skip a lot of steps that Young Justice takes, right? <laughs> but we look at something and it's like, okay, uh, you know, Roy in the first episode is talking about how angry he is about not getting into the Justice League and blah, blah, blah. And green arrows in the background and his eye, his, you know, his, his eyebrow goes up because he's in shock or whatever. Like mm -hmm. these little things or like someone says something that's an implication of something that's going to happen 20 episodes later. Like most shows don't do that. Mm -hmm. They don't want to do that. They'll be like, we're going to do this fun show, see what sticks and then pretend we had a plot, <laughs> you know, when we get to the end and do callbacks. Right. Yeah. But that's not what happens. And trying to figure out in this creative process, like what level some of these things happen, occur at. It sounds like some of them happen in the storyboard phases where you add details and they might take out yeah. the, the, the bra yeah. or change soup to oatmeal. But like <laughs> there are other things that you guys add in that it may end up going through into the process, right? I mean. Yeah, but I would say uh, Brandon and Greg are super detailed. So they normally have. <laughs> <laughs> like, we're all shaking our heads like, yeah, that, that tracks, <laughs> that tracks. That idea could have been implemented from the, from the beginning or it could be, uh, Whitney, what stuff did you add in, in for fun? That uh, showed up in episodes. So the hot lava stuff. I was, re <laughs> I was referencing the. Who's a hot lava? Yeah, I was, yeah. I was referencing the uh, JoJo, JoJo's bizarre adventure, the this anime in Japan, because like no. they they do like very like dramatic. <laughs> a very dramatic pose. Yeah, they always like, do very dramatic <laughs> pose, and then they're like <laughs> these muscular men, like always like voguing before they're fighting, and then it's like. It's, <laughs> It's really funny. And I was like, well, I think it's fitting for the scene. So I just dropped it and I was like, I wonder who will catch it. And then Berkeley was like, it's Jojo, right? I was like, yeah. I was like, oh, yeah. Oh, that's so funny. Because that scene, that scene where he where he comes up with the hot lava thing, I was like, because he's so, sorry, pun, hot, he's hot tempered, right? <laughs> you don't see, you have, we hadn't seen Brion being funny. Yeah. And he did the hot lava thing. And I was like, oh, he's serious. And this is terrible. And the bottom's going to drop out for him. But at the end, like, between like that scene, that thing you you had him do made it like oh he's 
he's doing this on purpose to be funny. And then afterwards when he laughs, he's like, okay, well, if we're going to be serious, then I'll do this. And I was like, whoa, suddenly that little thing, that pose that you did and the way that, you know, the voice actor voiced him in that scene with a little laughing and not taking himself too seriously suddenly adds a whole nother layer to the character because you have to do, I mean, it's the voice acting, but it's also what you guys are doing in the animation and in the poses. Do you guys have other things like that that you guys added in? Do you have the, the Superboy? When he was making fun of Tigers. Oh, when, oh, when, yeah. Night, when Nightwing, yeah, Nightwing, was Nightwing, Nightwing, Nightwing was like, Nightwing was like, yeah. 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 and then she punches him in the kidney. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was you. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> <There's> a... <laughs> that it was, it really, was a really fun scene. That was hilarious. Yeah. That was really funny. Yeah. I'm trying to process this now. So, so that was in the script. The line was in the script, right? Mm-hmm. But all right, I'm a huge Nightwing fan. I could also see Nightwing being interpreted in that scene. To be like, you know, dry about it, like says the says the girl with the, you know, stripper name yeah. or whatever. But you like brought out <laughs> you you brought out little like little kid Dick Grayson. That's like something he would have totally done in season one, yeah. right? That playfulness of him coming out when he's been so serious and now working with the team again because he's not been with the team yeah. for, for two years. I love it. What uh, other stuff? Um, I think in a way mission, it was it was this weird moment where both me and my story were partner Soto were on the same page about how we interpreted uh, Static and Wonder Girl. And oh, so we were yeah. like, oh, they're best friends. So uh, when they both show up on uh, New Genesis, I had, because I'm a big fan of uh, the sitcom community. Um, I had, to me. Uh, <laughs> what did you do, man? <laughs> so they did the Troy and Abed handshake and they cut it out for time. So I had Wonder Girl Oh, I was like, I didn't see that. <laughs> no, they cut it for time. Oh, but I think no. I think Soda's um, I think oh my God, there's it's been so good <laughs> Static and Wonder Girl uh, high five in Soda section so that got that got left in okay but I do remember that <laughs> so uh. that was that was there there's a lot of there's a lot of things that I like I would put in there jokingly and just try to see if we see can what, get it. See yeah. what we'll go through <laughs> so. I am bummed that didn't make it through that would have been beautiful so is that a thing that you do with with other shows so I I have to ask DC Lego versus Young Justice. <laughs> Gotta be a difference in storyboarding. Or even drawing? Art yes. style? <laughs> yeah, right? it's very different. <laughs> very different. Because <laughs> you're like, right? Yeah. Okay. So I, we draw, I went from drawing claw hands to like real anatomy. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, no, I, oh, like, oh, I gotta remember how to do fingers again. Yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah, and then uh, Lego is like for kids, so it was like more fun. And then the, also like we could like take the pieces of her, like, you know, we could pop off their head and their hair or their limbs. Right. In the Lego stuff. Yeah. What was I watching? I was watching one of the, oh, the the Flash one that I think Brandon directed. I can't remember what it was. DC Lego Flash. Sounds like it. It was yes. basically, it was, my wife was like, you know, the kids are just watching like superhero Legos. And I'm like, I know, it's actually a great kind of story about slowing down and focusing that's a great message for our kids, yeah. right? But there's, this, there's scenes in there where Cyborg gets blown into pieces. <laughs> it's like his head's being carried around and stuff, and it doesn't seem as yeah. odd as it should. Yeah. yeah. Right? So and he's still scenes. talking with his head, like, right. not attached to his body. Yeah. But yeah, it's like Lego is just, it's really fun because it doesn't take itself very, like, Seriously. serious. And then. <laughs> Batman does. Uh, except for Batman, but everybody <laughs> else is, like, just like, you know, it's like everybody's friends. They're all, like, team up, like, bad guys. Yeah. And, have a little nice wholesome message at the end, something like that. And right. Yeah. As opposed to Young Justice. Young Justice. With the like, bras in them. Yeah. <laughs> I've never, I've never, I've never, I've never, more adult <laughs> version. I'm never going to let you live that down. That that's going to be, yeah. that's people got to know about it. <laughs> that's going to be the, uh, the story that follows you around. <laughs> yeah. Matt. Uh, so, in addition to that, you worked on, so Lego Justice League and Lego DC Girls. Girls? Yeah. I haven't seen that one yet. It's so. on Netflix, I think. It came out on Netflix. I don't know if it's still there. Okay. Yeah, it's like it's a new, it's a newer version of the. It's like because they had Lego. Is it the Friends Lego set? Yeah. So the shape is different. Yeah. Still. So you're talking about even again a yet another different art style. Yes. Between, the uh, drastically different between Young Justice and even these two DC Lego mm-hmm. properties, right? Yeah. Have you you worked on you worked on Flashpoint Paradox? Yeah. So some of the design elements are not too far off of Young Justice. No, Phil was the designer on that one. Right. Um, I did Gotham by Gas, like, and that was one oh, where I okay. had to switch because now you're like, all right, you got to draw like Bruce Timm now. And so that, that's, and even JLA because uh, Shane Glines was our character designer and, okay. and John Suzuki. And then you had to make that switch also. But Oh, oh yeah, the Justice League action. Yeah. yeah. All on Hulu. So it's all on Hulu now. Oh, yeah. Yeah. 
I I wasn't sure I was going to enjoy it. <laughs> I'll be perfectly blunt. But this has happened to me before because I was like brave and bold. Uh, I don't know about what. Yeah, yeah. And then I watched it. And I was like, this show is way better than I expected yeah. it to be. And like, uh, what was it? The Chill of the Night. That was oh, that, that episode with, in Brave and the Bold. In Brave and the Bold. Yeah, that was really good. Yeah, that was like one of the dark, like deepest, really psychologically deep stories that. Yeah, I seen. the Doom Patrol episode. Every chance I can bring that up with James Tucker, I was like, "You really killed the Doom Patrol. You really killed the Doom Patrol." Yeah. And, and Batman loses, and you've it's like the first time you've ever seen Batman yeah. lose, and yeah, he's yeah. just like, "What the hell just happened?" Like yeah, that yeah. episode's so good. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So, so these different styles that you guys have to work in, I don't grasp that. <laughs> right. So I'm a writer. Mm -hmm. I write in my style. Yeah. I don't know how to imitate. I figure it, when I'm imitating somebody else's style of writing, it's going to be a dumpster fire. Like, I don't know. Because <laughs> I'm not writing from my heart yeah. and getting, you know, the details down. I could try. Mm -hmm. Right. But maybe somebody wouldn't notice. But for me, it wouldn't feel. But I've talked to several artists and the ability to switch or, or Christopher Jones, who does the art for the yeah. Young Justice comics. And he's done other stuff like Doctor Who is not the same design yeah. style as... And how you guys can switch between these between these styles, it, that's got to be a skill that not every artist is able to pull off, right? There's I run into a lot of kids, like, there's a lot of people who do their own style sketches, mm -hmm. right? And that's great. And you want, you want to do your own work, that's great. But here, you are having to adapt your styles to all of these different art styles. How does that work for you? Is it is it a process you find easy? Is it hard? Is it something that, is it something you, you would encourage people to be like, look, you got to draw on a bunch of different styles? Just like... Yeah, it's good to have like diverse styles because there are a lot of shows out there, and then it's good that you're like flexible. Yeah, you know, because like oh, I was talking with someone, and then they're saying how like when they look at portfolios, they like to see like a little bit of diversities, so like they know you could do a little bit of everything. Yeah, unless you know for sure that you want to do like serious, like for example, like you want to do like the serious DC stuff, like that's your typecast yeah, typecast yeah like you're yeah like you get typecast or yeah. it's like your what we call it like your wheelhouse that's yeah. where you live right yeah that's like your... if that's your forte then like just go for it yeah and then it's like sometimes but i feel like it's good to have like little different kind of stuff so mm -hmm. like it's more flexible because like i've been turned down like somebody like the studios turned out turned me down because like i don't think she could do comedy i was like what yeah, yeah. i was like what <laughs> <laughs> that's the the thing um that you run into a lot in animation. If you do action, they think you don't know how to do comedy. Yeah. And I, I've done comedy before for different studios. And then, you know, you pull those boards out and mm -hmm. you're like, I can do it. And, and, but yeah, it's just this weird, they do, yeah. they do typecast you in those yeah. certain roles. And that happens with authors and writers as well. That's why I have to use nom de plumes to do something else. But we we're also just talking to the DMP people, the, the composers, and they were saying like when they were going to do Batman Beyond, yeah, they were like, oh, we loved what you did with Batman, Brave, or Batman uh, the animated series, but uh, we're not doing that. And it's not orchestral, so we're going to get somebody else. And they're like, what? Like, <laughs> And then, of course, it was Chris Carter who did that amazing yeah. opening for Batman Beyond, yeah. right? So. No, we could they, we could do more than that. Yeah. They're saying right. They they have more range than that, and that's what you're saying right now. Mm -hmm. Do you feel like after doing artwork, like okay, so you got the DC Lego Justice League, you got the DC Lego Girls, different style, Young Justice. Do you feel like do you have your own style, and is that style similar to these? Nope. <laughs> not at all. Not at all. Totally nope. different. No. Nope. Okay. Do you feel like it gets? Inf I mean, of course, no more you work, you're going to be a better artist, no matter what you do. But do you feel like anything from those has influenced any of your uh... personal styles? Yeah, it's like, because before that, I like to draw, like, really, like, cute, small stuff. Right. And then now I draw a little bit more, like, people now. Some... Yeah, it's like, it's bringing more, like, some realism into it, but I still like to draw, like, cartoony style for fun. Right, right. Well, you had a reaction on your face, Matt, when I was talking about that. Did you, like, <laughs> that idea of the, the artwork influencing your personal style, and is your personal style very different than the style that you do? Uh, for the, the work that you do there's a lot a lot of Phil stuff has influenced the way I've drawn but I've been looking at Phil stuff since like 2008 because he was a designer on Planet Hulk and I was interning when he was working on Planet Hulk and so you know his shadow theories how he cuts his designs and all that stuff wait uh, sorry sorry shadow <laughs> theories what is that now <laughs> Like when you look at how the shadows are on the characters and scenes just okay like, and, yeah. and so how he like how he develops those shadows, how he uses those shadows to cut and influences the shape of someone's arm or you know like okay 
for for the best. There's not just one way to do that. No. He, I, I ask, feeling stupid, but yes. So here's here's. I think it was on Justice League War. So when he did, because that's around that time they got rid of Superman's trunks. Oh right, yeah, yeah. yeah. So he's in the full suit. Yeah. If you look at that model, uh, he colored the shadow as if the trunks were still there. Oh, and so, to give an impression yeah, of it without it being there. Exactly. So stuff like that. Um, so they sh- what do you call them? shadow theory? shadow theories? Shadow theories yeah. you learn from <laughs> Phil. Yeah, I've learned from Phil. And so that that influences what your home style is. But is your home style like, like like when you're just drawing for yourself, or if you want to do a project of your own, or when you do projects of your own, is that style very different? <laughs> Whitney's answer was very clearly <laughs> very different. <laughs> Mine is just the amalgamation of a lot of different things right now, so it's weird. I'm still trying to figure it out. Everyone is still trying to figure it out. Like I, yeah, like if you for look sure. at Stuart Eminem's artwork, like in the beginning to compare to now, Stuart, who's that? He was artist for Marvel. He worked on uh, X Men. We're bringing X Men back into this. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's he, the roots. <laughs> yeah, he retired. He officially retired. But if you look, he I think he he did a run of Ultimate Spider Man. If you look at that stuff, and then you look, you know, his. Um, all new X Men stuff. You can see his evolution. Like that guy's still learning. Yeah, I, I, I totally, I totally get that. I, I now really want to see Whitney's stuff. Like <laughs> you were like, I didn't even finish that question before. You were like, no, <laughs> I have nothing to do with Legos. <laughs> yeah. So, is, are there individual, are there projects that you want to work on too? Like, is there something that you like? Do you, would you want to go into animation as an animation style, or other projects besides what you're doing here? That's a question for both of you, but. Do you work on your own stuff, or is you just you're here, you're doing your art here? But it, I can't believe an artist doesn't go home and just draw their own stuff. <laughs> no, it's like because like uh, I usually go home and just like doodle to like wind down. Yeah. But it's like sometimes I mostly do watercolor because I stare at a screen all day, and I'm just okay. like I was like I can't look at screens when I go home. I just pull on Netflix and I just paint, <laughs> paint a little bit and then go sleep. But then the um, because like you know how like we start drawing on papers and yeah. like it's therapeutic. There's something different, like tactile, about working yeah. on like paints and paper as opposed to the digital medium. Yeah, because like also it's like it's like a nice relaxing thing for me. At least it's like the it's like you're drawing on paper instead of like the screen of the Cintiq. Okay. And it's like you feel the textures of it, and then it's like for me it's relaxing after like you know working a long day at work and then just go home and yeah, you gotta wind down. Is there, do you guys, for this is a question for both of you guys, do you have a preference, is there a preference or is it just different? Like, do you prefer to work digitally as opposed to analog or is it just great you just do both and it's fine either way? Uh, it's fine either way. Okay. But it's mostly, I, I also don't want to damage my eyes. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah, that <laughs> like totally to makes stare sense. Stare at the screen all day. <laughs> but I think it's good, right? You mix mm-hmm. it up, yeah. Yeah. right? Because you're also going to, you're going to learn things from doing things and making mistakes and things like that in an analog way that you don't in digital and vice versa. What about you, Matt? Do you have a... Uh, I'll draw on anything. I'll draw on a napkin. <laughs> <You're> like, <laughs> it's so, but I'm also like, Get I post a note. Yeah, yeah. No, yeah. I have people buy me like, they're like, uh, happy birthday or Merry Christmas. We bought you a sketchbook. And then I'll draw like two pages in, but most of my drawings are on post-it notes. So I, I have a crap ton of sketchbooks that I've never finished drawing in, but I'm also like, I spent a thousand dollars on this Cintiq, so I'm going to keep drawing <laughs> on it. <laughs> so, I mean, my, but I also bought my Cintiq when I didn't have that much money, so I was just always like, I'm going to get my money's worth. So the Cintiq, you both mentioned this now. Is this a tablet? Is it a, a how, what is this object? Because I've never heard of it. I thought you said antique at first. Oh. <laughs> Cintiq, what yeah. is that? It's the drawing tablet. It's like when you're walking around a studio later, you see like artists working on this monitor, they're drawing on the monitor. That's the Cintiq. Okay. So you have the monitor in front of you and you have a tablet in front of you that you're actually drawing on and it shows up on the monitor or you're drawing directly onto it? You just or, draw on the monitor. Yeah, you draw directly on it. Oh, yeah. oh. There's two different ones. There's yeah. one where you can draw on a tablet and yeah. it appears on the screen. And then, mm-hmm. Yeah. Any particular advantages, disadvantages that you find when you're working with digital? I think there'd be a lot of advantages, but there'd also be some disadvantages to working digitally as well. Yeah? If it crashes. If you're working oh. on it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> obvious one, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Turn it off and turn it on. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Niels. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, paper doesn't crash. No. Uh, paper, you can't control Z, Mm-mm. so that sucks. Yeah. <laughs> or like you just want to like move a line, so you had to like, say if it's on paper, you got to erase it, and it's got to draw that line again. But yeah. like on computer, just select just, that line, just you nudge just it. You move it and yeah. just nudge it a bit. Yeah. I see what you're saying. But it, does, it still isn't a preference, like one way or the other, even though you have these advantages, because there's something about that tactileness of a post-it note. Yeah. <laughs> so it's like, for paper, it's like it's good for like just jotting down the quit idea for like when we're doing thumbnails. 
Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, yeah, that's a good question too. Like, so do you do you do th thumbnails of your sketches on paper before you start to flesh them out when they're in digitally? Yeah, especially like when we have those handout meetings. Like, yeah. we'll you know, when oh we're right, script, you were mentioning that last yeah. time. You'd write a few quick notes. Mm -hmm. right. Or we'll just, you know, we'll draw it out. Or even even then, if I'm, like, I'll draw something out, I'll run to my director's office, and I was like, I'm thinking of a shot like this. You know, and he'll, he'll pull out his post-it note and be like, I'm thinking of something like this. So right. that's right. always helpful. I hear what you're saying. Mm -hmm. So as we're wrapping up now, you guys still have more episodes yes. that are going to be coming out, right? Yes. Yours are all beach scenes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> right? Spoiler. Oh. Right, yeah, exactly. <laughs> I'm like, there's one in episode three. There's one in episode seven. Was there one in episode one? Uh, he was, where were the guys he was beating up? Oh, they oh, were in the warehouse. Warehouse. Okay. warehouse. There was probably a beach outside. Yeah. <laughs> right. So the beach behind a warehouse. Right. <laughs> um, and last time you were talking to me, Matt, you were saying that there are sometimes uh, scenes will be given to some people that are like, oh, this person's really, really good at action scenes. Yeah. Maybe you might lean action scenes toward that person and vice yeah. versa. Are there particular like skills that you feel like people draw besides the beach <laughs> that, that, people, <laughs> that people hand to you because you that's a thing that you feel like you are particularly good at? Uh, I feel like it's mostly like the character acting. Okay. And then like some minor actions because like we had like a stronger action guy on our team. I was like, let him do this. It's <laughs> like, sorry, Andres. <laughs> and you and you're good with that. It's like that's his that's his shtick. Yeah, that's his thing. That. Yeah, and it's like yeah. also like I like doing like the like whatever faces the characters are making. It's really fun. Like the character development through the animation, right? What you're seeing. Yeah. Like the character arc being developed through like yeah. the pose. <laughs> yeah, and then it's like just. The funny poses that they're doing is fun to do too, and yeah. What about you, Matt? Uh, what the scenes that I've gotten? Well, no. <laughs> well, like, uh, is there a particular thing that you that you lean into that someone thinks like, oh, if we're gonna do X, hey, uh, let's you know, Matt's one of the people that does this really uh, well. Oh, uh, it, it was weird. I was because like, coming off of Justice League action and even DTVs, you you have to learn how to do fight scenes or just do action in general. Sure, yeah, yeah. But I, I tend to, for YJ season three, I tend to get all the scenes where characters get shirtless. So, <laughs> Superboy's shirt so, getting Wait, but that out. was on the beach. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, wait, he, that was you? No, no, no. In, in Royal We, that character burns as the, the villain, that magma looking villain. Oh, burns, burns his shirt off. Plasma. Oh, yeah. Plasma. 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 Plasma burns his shirt off. Uh, Jefferson is shirtless. Uh, <laughs> What other in, triptych in, someone's in, probably shirtless? Oh, yeah, I already said Jefferson is shirtless. What Jefferson is shirtless. Jace. Was five? Someone got shirt. Oh, Brion got hella naked in five. Oh, yeah. He burned all his clothes off. <laughs> so I tend to get the, like, if your character needs to take a shirt off, <laughs> I'm your guy. <laughs> <laughs> that was not the answer I expected. And I love everything. Else. Yeah. No, and that, I, <laughs> that's where they were like, oh, uh, Jason Jefferson, give that one to Matt. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, we're doing that for sure. But the bra's too far. Yeah. yeah, we're going to take that too far. <laughs> All right. Is there anything else that you guys would like to share with our audience, particularly people who might be interested in getting into storyboarding and doing that? Just call people and ask, <laughs> basically. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's it's just keep networking because, like, your friends could one day be the ones that that's going to hire you. Yeah, yeah. Or, like, with the connection that could get you somewhere else and just keep drawing. Yeah, keep, keep drawing and, and maintain healthy relationships also. You know, that's... It's a plus in this industry. Keep drawing, study film, understand why things are good. I watch and listen to a lot of just film analysis while I'm working also. Try to catch things and help help me grow better as a storyteller. Also. That's that's actually a really, really good advice I wouldn't even think of to give an artist as well. I mean, like, I, when I think of that, unless you're doing not just animation, but pretty much any art, like, how do you tell us, like, again, back to the DMP interview, they were talking about telling, learning how to tell a story through music. Yeah. You're, about, you're learning how to tell a story, even if it's a single panel for your own painting, mm -hmm. how do you tell that story through the painting by what film analysis? Yeah. And well, the other thing, I would, uh, Chris Copeland, he was one of our board artists, he would always say, rush into failure, which was, I think, one of the best advices. <laughs> rush into failure? Yeah. So get it all out there. I love it. <laughs> I love it. Yeah. Because, yeah, you don't know what works until you get it out there. So just, you know what I'm saying, just draw. You know, and and then you get better at drawing. Like just storyboard, just keep making stuff, and you're gonna hone that craft, and you're gonna just keep getting better the more you do something. I love it. Well, thank you both. Thanks for coming back, Matt. Yeah, no Thanks for coming on, Whitney. Thanks, Thanks for, for spending me. some time with us, not in the Watchtower, but here <laughs> in Burbank. Um, where can people find you? Talk to you about what you do uh, here on Earth Prime? Social media? Oh yeah, Instagram or. Either, yeah. Yeah, Instagram. Yeah, it's a W H T N T N G. W H T N T N G. Yes. Got it. 
Nice. And Matt? I'm on Instagram. I think it's M-A-T-T-H-I-I-A-S-B. Uh, and you're also on Twitter, too. I am on Twitter, on Twitter, yeah. Uh, Matthew B 64 please send us all your Reddit theories. We, you oh, know. yeah. Oh, it's great. <laughs> the Wait. theories are great. <laughs> Wait, what? Me and Whitney, well, Whitney and Whitney and Soda will just send me like, hey, this is on Reddit. Like the memes, uh -huh. the theories that people have, the jokes they have, <laughs> like comparing Halo to, to Kenny or like there's just yeah. Kenny. Oh, yeah. what? Yeah. Uh, oh, so I yeah. don't I don't like how accurate that is. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's terrible. Keep keep sending us this stuff. We, I love reading them. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's we fantastic. all love reading them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> on that note, uh, thanks to everyone else for sharing some time with us as well. You can find us on Twitter at the YJ Files, on Facebook at Crashing the Mode, on the yjfiles.tumblr.com, on our website crashingthemode.com and our email address, whelmedpodcast at gmail.com. You can also find us on YouTube, Stitcher, and iHeartRadio. If you enjoy our show, please consider sharing it with a friend. You can also support the show by giving us a five-star review on Apple Podcasts or your podcatcher of choice. And make sure to join us on social media to talk about Season 3 and every crazy thing that is happening in this season so far. And as always, stay whelmed, everyone. You've been listening to Whelmed, the Young Justice Files podcast. Our hosts are Rich Howard and Emily Booza. Our editor and producer is Neil Powell. Our theme was composed by Emily Mio. Our logo was created by Kevin Bates. Whelmed is a fan-made podcast and is not officially affiliated with DC Comics, DC Entertainment, Warner Brothers Animation, and any other owners of Young Justice or its related source material. As such, these companies have sole ownership of all symbols, images, names, logos, and proprietary material related to Young Justice. Original content of this podcast is ours under Creative Commons. Thanks for listening, and stay whelmed. Well